Hi, um, I've been doing those little balls all afternoon. Uh, so I threw 36 of them um, and I've got a kiln to unpack here. Uh, and there's a lot of refire pieces in here. Um, and I decided to um, just glaze everything with Randy's Red um, to actually uh, see what I could get with a slightly different profile. Uh, so I'll give you the profile at the end. Um, but I, it is different. I changed the profile just a little bit. And, um, and I've got reds, but it's a different red. Um, so this glaze is fascinating. Um, I had a plate on the very top shelf, which turned out like red with a little bit of a, well, brown red with a spiral in it, which is not the best Randy's red, but that's kind of a nice, attractive little plate there. Um, and then I had all these lugs, um, which um, once again, Facing the element, they came out brown. We've noticed this before that they sort of, when they're facing the element, they sort of come out brown. And when they're facing away from the element, uh, they're the red. Uh, so you get the, on each piece, you've got different kind of looks, which is quite good. These are the ones for the local bakery that I do. But that's a deeper red than I, it's not as bright as I've got before. It's a deeper, sort of a richer red. Um, let's see, this one's inside. So it's not next to the elements, and it is red all the way around. So it, does that mean the elements are making it hotter, right next to the elements, and it's staying brown, or is it getting, or you know, is it cooler next to the elements? I don't know. I haven't got inside the kiln to find that one out, but um, but it does seem like uh, I should try that. Maybe put some cones right at the outside and and right on the inside and see what the difference is. Um, but it's red all the way around, and it's definitely a richer, deeper red. Um, so one of the shops I sell mugs to wanted a lot of browns. They, they, they said they had, um, and that one has a mottling look. Oh, there could be some, that's right, these ones were Harris Tenmaku. Uh, I tried a different glaze in there as well. But, uh, but that's got some red in it, and, and it's... Uh, a lot of mottled brown. I'm not sure if you can catch that with the light or not. But a um, little bit of reddishness with some brown. And that's a different shape mug than I normally do. And I also had, with the Harris Tenmaku, uh, some fluted glasses. And I like it because it, it goes to black, this Harris Tenmaku. Um, and it has the, you have the red area in there too with the brown and also going to black. So I've always liked this glaze, just for that reason, basically. And then another Randy's red next to the element. So red this side, oh, brown a little bit, but it was starting to go red uh, on the other side. So uh, that's kind of nice though. Various, the pieces, two different glazes on the same piece. This one's deeper inside and it's red mostly all the way around. Uh, what I did was I cooled the kiln fast down to 1750 and then I slowed it down um, so it was cooling at 100 degrees um, an hour from 1750 to 1700 instead of holding at 1750 um, which gives you the reds so uh, so it was just to try something different oh that was nice oh we've got some runs and drips in there too that makes it even nicer we got some nice goldy, not gold, but um, it definitely kind of varies quite a bit, breaking to black where it's thinner on the rim. And this has an hour soak at uh, 2232. Um, more of Okay, these are all the refires now over these plates. And I did Randy's Red over all of the plates, which had been fired before. Um, and I think they had Randy's Red on them, but the Randy's Red had it actually, it was either Randy's Red or Harris Tenmaku, one of those anyway. Um, so these are all experiments.
I don't know how to make them again if I try. Uh, it's all on speckled clay, but isn't that rich? Wow. Too bad I don't know how to get it again. <laughs> it's kind of a nice plate. Really nice. Wow. It got bluishness in there. Um, and it, I just know it had a Tenmaku glaze, one of my Tenmakus on it. I think it was the Harris Tenmaku, but it could have been the Waxing Brown, which I don't think it was. Uh, or it could have been the Tomato Red, any one of those. Harris Tomato Red or Randy Red. And all I did was reglaze them with Randy's Red and do this firing schedule. That's like the first one I took out. So that one has the same right, rich red glow, and that's where I glazed it thicker in the center. So the thicker it went red, and then it needed to be thicker on the outer edge to get the red all over, I guess. And here's another one of the originals. God, I wish I knew how to do that one again. It is really nice. See, this plate is old. I made this in 2018. Uh, and it's been sitting because it was ugly. It was an ugly plate. So I sat it there and just thought one day I'll refire it. And I just finally did it four years later. Okay, so here's another one of these. So my guess, because of this is much redder, is that the, there was a thickness difference in the glaze. Because um, it's, I know that Randy's red goes more red the thicker you have it. But anyway, this one looks the best of the three of these so far. And this one is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. What a nice sheen. It's not super glossy, but it's got a really good sheen on it. And clay, this was the red clay that I did this one out of. And this Randy's Red always looks better on the dark red iron clay that I use. But that is gorgeous. What a nice plate. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. That's got some really nice surface quality. This is the Speckle Clay, number 455, from Pottery Supply House. Well, look at that. Nice. I think I, I, I hope I got four of these plates and four of the big ones too. I don't remember because this would be a nice set. Same Randy's red. This looks pretty consistent. All four plates, black edges with red on the inside. So that's beautiful. Two more of these. So this is totally consistent. Really pretty plates. Another one of these. So this is nice. So that's two of these and three of the other plates, the bigger ones so far. And another one of these. So this makes three of each now. Three of the big plate and three of the small plate. Two more of these. Too bad, because I got four of these and three of the bigger plate. So, um, so I don't know why I didn't have four, because I always make things in fours or eights. But I love these small ones. That's lovely red in there. But these would even match the bigger plates. There you go. Oh, maybe I've got 10 of these. Okay, this is the program I did for Randy's Red. Okay, this is the other kiln which might have some of those uh, bowls in here. Um, and I've got some of the noodle bowls that I do with the ramen chopstick kind of things over the top there. That's uh, folk art white with my apple green and oatmeal over the top. Nice bowl. 
I love these bowls. We eat out of them for salad. I usually eat out of mine, but... Um... And then I have a whole bunch of the usual colorings that I have. Um, and this is a slight adjustment to my firing shed where I lowered it by six degrees Fahrenheit because uh, the last firing I had some runs coming off the edge uh, just where the handle wasn't. Whew, look at that. Six degrees difference. Stopped it doing it. <laughs> anyway, um, that's Tenmiku Gold with uh, bright blue, sorry, variegated blue and oatmeal. Tenmiku Gold, bright blue, floating blue out of the book Mastering Cone Six Glazes and uh, my oatmeal. Did it do it to all? Oh, that one still ran a little bit. So I still got a trouble with a couple to fetch that one off. I did glaze these kind of heavy because I was looking for more blue in them. Um, so that's probably what did that. But that's easy to grind that little bit off. And then I've got my bakery mugs. Um, they're ordering lots of mugs this time of the year. People are coming for the tourist season again. That's a nice one. The speckled clay. There you go. I'm having trouble getting clay. I am out of clay. I'm using recycled clay up at the moment. Okay, I just ground off that one that was running, so you can see you can get it down to nothing, and it's it'll stay flat, so it's not a, that big a deal, and it's not sharp anymore. It's it's kind of just it's smooth. Same with this one. This one wasn't quite as bad as far as that, anyway, but uh, get it nice and flat. I've shown that in videos in the past twice now, so people ask about it. So just look back in the videos about bench grinding. I think I mentioned it in the title of the video too. Variegated blue with blue and oatmeal over it. That turned out really nice. No run. Look, I didn't even stilt it. It didn't run. It's uh, just like dip the mugs a little bit thicker, I guess. So, um, same again with this one. Really nice. Noodle bowls. And this is a really popular color combination. Just bright blue, floating blue, variegated blue. Both those are in Mastering Cone 6 glazes and then an oatmeal over the top. Something with tin oxide so that you get those kind of opacifying crystal type things. That's very pretty. Really nice again. The speckled clay has a slight uh, grittiness when you don't glaze the bottom. This is number 80 from Laguna, which is a nice, oak, I, it's oven proof, so that's why I use this clay for my baking dishes. Focal white and uh, apple green over the rim with oatmeal. So there's the oatmeal, focal white, apple green. So you can see that how it changes things. Then to finish off the firing, I had another noodle bowl. I saw four of these today in the gallery. Uh, not this color, but uh, they, people buy them in pairs a lot of times. But um, anyway, that was the Randy's red ones I sold and the Tenmiku gold ones. But this is beautiful too. I mean, isn't that pretty colors? Just really pretty. Just all go out and buy that Mastering Cone 6 Glaze book. This one's really nice, but it did. I have a little grinding to do on that one. 
How about that for a beer tankard? Pretty nice. And just that accent of the matte green at the bottom is perfect. But you've got blue reflecting into the oatmeal. But look at the runs. I glazed to the halfway mark, so this is how much it ran. You know, they glazed down to there, and it glazed, it ran down another two, three, two and a half inches, I guess. Well, that's just about six centimeters. What about the mouse gray? See if that one ran. Nope, this one did. Oh, get that one. Oh, it did. Yep, just under the handle. It's always the handle. When you encourage the running like this, it's always the handle where you've got to do a little grinding right at the end, which I wish I didn't have to, but I just, uh, maybe I only need to go uh, glaze a third of the way down. I'll try that next time. Glaze one third of the way down. Hit myself on the head before I start glazing and remind myself. The blue never runs, so what? Let, didn't run. Yeah, for some reason the blue runs, but it never goes off the bottom. And that's really pretty too. Somebody just ordered a blue tankard. So maybe I'll be sending them this one. Yeah, that's on order, I guess. Here's one that I didn't put a handle on. I Never make this mistake, but I ran out of handles when I was putting handles on, and I was in a rush, so I didn't pull another one. But that's a nice vase now. Yeah, that's very pretty. That's my dark blue with the variegated blue and oak peel. So I have two of these to pick from. Somebody wanted a big one, so we've got two to pick from. Nice blue tankard. Look at those runs. They do exactly what I tell them to do. Yeah, no, no, no way. <laughs> I wish I could say that. Turquoise. For those sitting on the beach with a nice cold beer. And did it run? Yes, it did again. Another mouse gray with the run just under the handle. Oh, it's a, it's a dilemma. I love getting the runs like this, but you always have to grind a little off the handle a bit. But the piece is so beautiful. Those runs are perfect. Good job I have a bench grinder. There you go. Another perfect one. There's a matching pair of these if somebody wants a matching pair. It's for your beach. Summer drinks at the beach. You put these in the freezer and then pour your beer in and you get an icy froth on the top of the beer. It's gorgeous. Of course, in England, we like our beer warm. Not. And here's a technical gold one that ran but didn't go off the bottom, so that's perfect. See, it is just about thickness of glaze and how far you glaze down. But isn't that perfect? Best word in the English language. And the last one. Oh, the stilt collapse. Look at that. Stilt collapse. Is it going to come off? Yes, it did. So I'll have to grind a little bit, not much on that one, but because the stilt collapsed, the little metal pin collapsed. I'm, a, I'm out of clay. I'm out of these pin, these things. I don't have hardly any of these left. It's hard to get anything. Supply chain issues. I've been waiting for clay for two months. And, uh, and I've ordered a hundred of these stilts. I don't. I hope they get here next week. Otherwise, I have to start wiping the bottoms of my pieces. Anyway, that's the last one. This was supposed to be a bowl video, but I'm, a bunch of other stuff came out, so I thought I'd show you as well. It was a windy. I made frames all day today because I don't have much clay at all. Just recycle stuff. So I've been making lots of frames out of wood. Um, but uh, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm still trying to do a video a week, um, but it's getting busier, so it's going to be a push. So just stay safe, enjoy your summer, um, get out in the sun, and uh, be careful. All right, take care. Bye.